Okay, so in this case, uh, I want to talk about cumulative voting. We saw cumulative voting, uh, you may have seen it in some of our readings, but you saw it in the GE proxy statement from 2014. I believe it was the first shareholder um, uh, initiative. Okay? Now, cumulative voting is another thing that kind of throws the wrench in making uh, shareholder votes at the annual meeting just a very simple thing like vote for, vote against. Right? So uh, in the last video and, and in class, we talked about the fact that uh, we have some, uh, obviously we have, we have uh, very powerful shareholders. They might own 2, 3, 5, 10% of the firm. We also have management shares. Those management shares are disproportionate. They're, they have exponential voting power. So this kind of throws a wrench into just simple voting. Another wrench is cumulative voting. Now, cumulative voting uh, basically is where you multiply the number of shares times the number of board seats. And the pool of shares ends up being that number. So without cumulative voting, we just have simple votes. So here's, here's, so let me just say this. Number of shares times number of board seats is how you would figure out how many votes there are. Okay? So the example I'm giving, there's a company with 1,000 shares total. That's the amount of shares in total. And there are nine board seats coming up this year for election. So simply, there are nine times 1,000, 9,000 total, uh, uh, total votes. Okay? Number of board seats times shares. Normally, we would just have a thousand votes. It's just, you know, every share has a vote, right? Now, we'll also make an assumption that 40% that of, uh, of shareholders don't vote. So in this election that we're going to have for our board, we have 600 votes represented, okay? Now, if we have 600 votes represented, that's 600 times nine board seats. So there's going to be 5,400 total votes in this cumulative voting set. Okay. So first, let's talk about where there's not cumulative voting. Where there's not cumulative voting, we have 600 votes. Okay, Because, remember, 40% of the people are not voting. So we have 600 votes, and we vote for or against candidates. So I'm just making an example here. Here are, oh, I said, I said 10. Sorry. I'm confusing everything. I said nine candidates. My fault. My fault. Okay. So we have nine candidates. And I'm just making an example. Uh, I'm, I'm an activist investor, and I'm an investor, and I'm going to vote for number one and for number two and against number six, whatever it might be. It could be that number six didn't want some merger that I wanted to go through, and so I'm really against that person. It doesn't really matter who these people are and why I'm voting for or against. The simple thing is that when we have these 600 votes, we're basically rubber stamping here because since we're voting, uh, since we're voting for each of the candidates, all these candidates need is a majority for. And that's, for some reason or other, always rubber stamped, right? I mean, we, we know that uh, almost never is a board member who actually gets on the slate. They're almost never voted down, okay? Now, in a cumulative voting setting, though, um, let's say I, by the way, I own 10%. So I have, I own 10% of the firm, okay? Uh, and, and that means I own 100 shares, okay? So this is me. Now why? Obviously, this is not 10% of that. I own 10% of the firm, so I own 100 shares of 1,000. There are 600 votes that show up. So already I have a lot of power because I have one-sixth of today's vote. 10% okay? is a lot, but a, a strong activist investor like Carl Icahn could have 10% of the votes. So I already have one-sixth of the vote here, so I do have a, a decent amount of sway in this election. But under cumulative voting, let's imagine that there's one board seat that either I want to make sure the person doesn't get elected or I want to make sure the person does get elected. Cumulative voting allows me to increase the probability that that person will or won't, depending on what my agenda is, get elected. How? Well, I own 100 shares, okay? I get 900 votes. That's nine board seats times 100 uh, shares that I own. So I have 900 votes and I can cluster these 900 to one particular board member. That's the key, okay? I don't have to vote here and here and here and here and here. I can just target my votes to one specific. So let's say for some reason it's number six. Board seat number six, we hate or we love this person. We wanna get them elected or not get them elected, whatever it might be. I now have 900, okay, out of 5,400 votes. And 
assuming that others don't necessarily cluster, so assuming that a lot of investors spread their votes out normally, my 900 votes represents a disproportionate amount in that one specific election. Okay? It would take a lot of time to kind of work out the mathematics. It's basically a probability uh, event. I can increase the probability through cumulative voting that I can get something done in a specific targeted area with one director. It's not that, I mean, you think about it, everybody gets this amount of votes. So your initial reaction might be, who cares? We just multiplied one thing times the other, and everyone gets that much power. That's true. But if we think that the other people who are voting are just going to kind of vote normally, where they're going to go uh, you know, for, 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 against, they're splitting their votes up equally. Okay? So they might be splitting their votes up equally amongst the nine candidates, just like they were here. Okay? But I'm not doing that. I'm going to target a specific election. Okay? It's not really all that easy to understand. And I'm going to say this. It's really not all that important for our class. I don't want to get bogged down in cumulative voting. We could run a two-hour simulation in class where we actually do a vote uh, and we show how this can and can't work. I actually don't think cumulative voting is as powerful as some people think. Um, but it is more powerful than this if you're going to target, say, one or two board seats or something like that. Okay? So what you need to know. What you need to know is that cumulative voting exists. It is law in, I think, about half of the states in the United States. So it, it does exist a lot. Um, lots of shareholders want it because it's seen as shareholder protection for small shareholders who have less power in the corporation. Uh, and my take on it is that I don't really think it normally matters. I think sometimes it matters in really contested elections. Imagine you have a board member where he's, he or she is really divisive in the corporation. So you have a lot of people for and a lot of people against. This can tip the power of that one candidate. But for the most part, that doesn't happen. And so for the most part, I'm not convinced that cumulative voting really, really matters. So for our course, know it exists. Know it's, you know, it, it's the law in some states. Uh, know that it's another way that kind of throws a wrench into our analysis of simple voting at an annual meeting. Uh, and that's about it. I, I wouldn't spend too much, uh, too much more time uh, thinking about this or worrying about you know, any math involved or anything like that.